Can everyone see my screen? Perfect. So we're here today for the in, oh, we have someone come in. So we are here today for the ins and outs of a great capability statement. Um, a lot of times you see right here, we have core competencies, differentiators and past performance. So we'll get, we'll dig a little deeper into those three areas and what more you need for your capability statement. So a little bit of information here about the WBDC before we start off. Um, our mission is to support and accelerate business development and growth targeting women and serving all diverse business owners in order. We are also um, host to one of the Illinois P-TEC services that is the Procurement Technical Assist Centers. And here are a list of a few of the different things that as p we are here to assist small businesses like yourself um, through navigating these government contracts and whatnot. So here we have a great definition of what a capability statement is um, by our very own Small Business Administration. A capability statement is a concise one-page document of your business competencies. Think of it as your business resume. Its purpose is to provide specific information that will convince potential customers to do business with you. When written well, it will differentiate your business from the competition. So always try to keep that in mind. You want to differentiate yourself from the competition. Now, here are a few things that you want to make sure to keep in mind um, when you are putting together your capability statement. You have the essentials, the rule, and the exception. The essentials are you want to make sure that you remember that this is also one of your primary marketing tools. It's going to be just like your business card, the first impression that you are putting out there for your business. You wanna remember that this is another way of brand awareness and awareness of the project that you're seeking. Also, you wanna make sure that you are targeting your audience. Who do you want to showcase your business to? Who are you trying to impress? Who are you trying to talk to? Um, it's also a working document. These are always going to be um, edited whatever new information that you need to add about your business, you can always come back. So don't feel like this is an end all be all. And lastly, it's one of many versions, as I said. You will have one depending on who you're targeting. You can have some where you're targeting based off of the core competencies that your business has or based on some of the past performances that you have. So again, this will be many of one, of one version that you will have when you're, put, when you're handing these out, sending them out and whatnot. Next, we have the rule. So typically you see that this is gonna be a one page document. Um, it's going to provide specific information that's going to attract potential business. Again, who, the people you are targeting, always keep that in mind. Third, it differentiates your, bus your business from the competition. So you wanna make sure that you make yourself stand out. Think about how you can stand out, what your business does that makes you stand out. Lastly, we have the exceptions. When an agency requests two pages, if their agency particularly requests two pages, um, be it on a proposal or, or they just want a little more information, then it's okay to go ahead and have that second page of information on, on your capability statement. But essentially we wanna to try to keep it to a one pager you know, concise information. Many people don't like to read, so we wanna make it as targeted and give them the information that they're looking for. And then um, also when it's being requested as part of a response, like I said, um, either as sources sought notice or request for information on, any, on a proposal or for like a quote, you wanna make sure that you are addressing um, all of the specifications that they're asking. So if they ask for two pages, make sure that you give them enough information to fill up those two pages. So when we have this capability statement, when do we use it? So there are different opportunities when you get to use them. So if you're at a trade show, you're walking the room, you're stopping at the different booths, you introduce yourself, maybe give a, a, you know, a quick elevator pitch, you hand these out to the different people that you're meeting there or just throughout the room. Also different outreach events. Uh, there's outreach events throughout the city that different agencies host. Um, different contractors will host their own outreach event. 
please, by all means, you wanna make sure that you attend if you get the chance. It's a perfect time to distribute those capability statements. And more times than none, they will be asked for. Um, if you try to network, people are gonna be like, oh, wonderful, do you have a capability statement on hand? You wanna make sure that you do. Also virtual events like these. You wanna have a digital, a digital one that you can either put into a chat or email at the end of the virtual event, but it just shows that you are prepared and ready and you have that capability statement on hand to distribute. As I mentioned, agency, agency hosted industry days. Um, the different agencies will host outreach events based on contracts or just as like a meet and greet and mixers. It's always an opportunity. For teaming engagements, if you're going to be looking to be a subcontractor, if you're trying to joint venture with a different uh, small business or with a prime contractor, you wanna make sure that you have those on hand because they're gonna to wanna to know what your business can do in, in order to work with you. So you wanna make sure that those are ready with all of the precise information that they need in order to make a decision to work together with you. And it's, it's mutual. So just like they'll be asking you for one, you wanna ask them for one as well. Uh, next up, site visits. Some of these contracts will host site visits. If you attend, it's also another opportunity to network, talk to the agency owners, talk to prime contractors that are, are there and in, in attendance, and give them their capability statement as an introduction to you. You know, hi, my name is so-and-so. Um, you know, I'm very interested in this contract. That's why I'm here at the site visit. Please take, take a look at my capability statement, and I hope that we can work together at in some point. Keep it nice and simple. And then for presentation purposes, you if you need to present and introduce your company at an introductory meeting that they want to get to know you precisely, you might wanna have a copy of your capability statement to either hand out or to include in the presentation just to showcase what it is that you do in a nutshell. And again, with email introductions, you can always do an elevator pitch via email. You, want, you, you met someone at an outreach event, you wanna follow up, you gave them your business card, maybe you didn't have your capability statement on hand, you can send them an email and include that capability statement right there and then and let them know exactly what you do and that you'd love to set up some time to talk about more information and how you guys can work together. So those little tidbits will definitely help push you ahead of the game. So let's dig in a little bit deeper. There are some key areas when you're working on a capability statement that you want to look that you want to make sure that you include. So first off, company branding. Then we have company data, core competencies, differentiators, and your past performance. So when we're talking about company branding, you want to think about it's still your capability statement, but you want to make sure that you are keeping your brand with your capability statement. It's still a marketing tool. So that means you want to make sure you're including your logo, that it looks like your business card, that they match your website, your social media. If you have a tagline attached to your company, you want to make sure that you include those on the capability statement that shows that it is still all the same company. And you can also, that goes from the mission statement to a company overview. You want to make sure that you are keeping your brand aware when you are doing these capability statements. And a, a lot of times you will see where people will put capability statement really large, and then you have a really small corner where you have your logo. The important part is your logo. I wanna know whose business this is. I don't need to read the word capability statement. So you really wanna showcase your logo. I'm sure you all work really hard in creating those and getting those done. So you wanna make sure that you're showcasing that and showcasing who your company is. Next up, we have company data. It's really important that you know what company data that you wanna put onto these capability statements. People like to put up their DUNS number, a CAGE number if you have one, um, any NAICS codes or PSC codes that you might have depending on the type of business you are, you wanna list those. Now, if you are going to list any of those codes, I definitely recommend that you list them and you include what those what it pertains to because there's so many different types of codes that people aren't going to remember and you wanna make this easy for the person who's going to be reading your capability statement. Um, you also want to include if you have a physical location and work area, it, again, if that's applicable. Some people don't have 
um, an actual, you know, brick and mortar. So you want to just give as much information, be it just, you know, a website, um, social media link, or any of those, you know, technical uh, uh, points of contact that they can use and need. Um, and the point of contact is very important. And you do not want to forget every point of contact that you have, your website, phone number, email. If you have a fax still, include your fax. You want to make sure if they are interested in you, they have every way of getting in contact with you. So please remember to do that. I can't tell you how many times people will just be like, oh my God, I completely forgot that I needed to put the most important part. How do they contact me? So I can't stress that enough. And then if you have any um, socioeconomic set aside logos or certifications, now I want to stress only put certifications that you have. So if you're in the process of, of getting a certification, and let's say you have you applied for your WBE, um, you don't want to put anything that says um, status pending, waiting approval, just leave it out. Again, this document will be able to be editable, so you can always go back and put that. But you don't want to put any information that you currently don't have, because if you start handing these out, and God forbid that you get denied, now it's been out there that you you could have possibly been, and you put in someone's head that you, you're, you're going to be WBE and now you can't. So you, it's, it's again, your first impression and you don't wanna put any false information. So just make sure you can edit that once you get that approval notice, okay? So next we have core competencies. So for the core competencies, this is the, the important part because this is where you're gonna talk about what are the core services that your business does. You know, um, anything on your capability statement, it doesn't have to be um, all relative to just, you know, everything that you do. Because you're targeting a specific group, you can make it more, you can change those core services and core competencies to what you really want to showcase. Um, so for instance, if you do if you do a janitorial work and the person that you want to give this capability statement is looking for someone who also um, has their own cleaning agents and that they're green or organic, those are things that you could list there as your top core competencies because you know that's what they're looking for and you want to make sure that that stands out. Again, you're targeting specific needs. Um, so if you have different versions because it depends on the industry, that's okay because you wanna make sure you're targeting the right person. I can't stress that enough. This is essentially your resume. So just like on a resume, when you're going after a specific job, you wanna make sure that you tailor yourself and your strengths to that job that you're going after so that you look more um, hireable so that they, they, so that they want you. So in the same essence, you're doing the same thing with these capability statements. Um, and so then you want to use keywords that stand out specifically, depending on the industry, what are words that they know and that they like to see, add those in there, make sure that they get seen. And then you want to make sure you're keeping bullet points. You want, it, it's, they're easy to read, it's concise and it's quick. And that's what you wanna do for the person reading it. You wanna make it easy peasy for them. Next up, we have differentiators. So for the differentiators is where you kind of really have to dig deep and what tell us what makes you so special. Why do I, if I'm looking to hire you, why do I wanna hire you versus your competition? So you, these are great questions that you can ask yourself if you're having trouble uh, coming up with a differentiator. What makes your product special? Try, dig deep. What makes you special more so than your competition? What is the most, most popular feature or benefit among existing clients? Another, another good reason to, to make you stand out. What do you have that they don't? What is something that you have that your competition is lacking as far as a service? You know, Think about the different services that you do, the different products that you have. These are all differentiators that will make you stand out. Now, this is a list of things that are not considered differentiators. And a lot of time people find it easy to just go ahead and do. 
You don't wanna put generic statements. You don't want to have something that's static and that you can't, that's never really changing and that you just basically know that you slapped it there on your differentiators and you're not going to look back at it and change it up at any moment. Um, it's not a one time a type fits all. You want to make sure that you, it's not like a unisex piece of, piece of clothes that fits everyone. You want to make sure you stand out. Only specific people will really want you based off of what you do quality, people, services, and products. Those are all still generic statements when you're, when you're saying things like that. You wanna really dig deep about what you do or list um, that you've been in, 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 um, in business X amount of years um, to make you seem like, oh, great. Yes, you've been in business for so long. You could have included that in your brief overview about your business, but that's not something that you wanna state as a differentiator. Um, again, socioeconomic cert certifications. Um, it's great that you state that you want to be known that you're a woman owned business, but you don't have to list that as a differentiator because that doesn't make you different. The other business could also be a woman owned business. So how is that making you different? Really think about that. So as, as great as that is, you don't want to list that as a differentiator because it's just looked like she, she really didn't have anything to add, but to put that through. Um, that your solutions provider or best in class, wor world class, best of breed, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure you're really great at what you do, and that's fantastic, but you don't need to use those words to make it sound like that. Sometimes a little bit like less is more. So keep that in mind. And then we have our past performance. This is our experience. What, you know, what do you have to showcase for your experience? Um, work that you have performed that is similar work as, as your targeted audience. So if you're, if you're going after a specific audience and you know what that project is that they're looking for, you wanna, you wanna look back at the different projects that you've worked on, even if they're not government related and they're just, they, they could be private work that you've done, but that is similar to the work that they're looking for. You wanna make sure that you include that in your past performance because it will show them that you know how to do that, that you have that, exper that, you have that experience and expertise to perform that. Um, if you're, and especially if you're new to government marketplace, do not feel bad about using private work and being like, oh, well, I don't have any government work to show. That's totally okay. And it's expected, especially of new businesses. So it's better to showcase work that you've done previously than to just not showcase anything at all. So you really do want to look back at the stuff that you've worked on. And when you're putting together your past performance, you can, you can either showcase, you know, um, the business name, the name of the project that you worked on. Some people like to include um, if there was a, the cost of the project. So it kind of shows that you can work on larger or smaller contracts, but you just want to give enough information that entices them. I like to use the example that you can put um, web, I did web development for Google. Oh, that's, that's great. So can you tell me a little bit more information about exactly what you did for Google while you were working on this web development project. So it leaves room open for conversation. You don't wanna give so much information that it just closes them off and you don't have room to kind of elaborate and build on that relationship in business. So you give them enough information to entice them and entice conversation so that you can make yourself memorable to them. So here I have five tips to a successful capability statement that I want you to make sure that you take away today and remember. You wanna make sure that you title your different sections so that it's the information is there where they need to look and what information they need. Core competencies, differentiators, and past performance. You don't wanna forget your contact information. As I said before, I can't stress it enough. You know, put a, the name, a point of contact. Who's the primary person that they should be talking about, especially when they're looking to start up business with you. You wanna include your email, phone, and website. Three, create new versions. Remember that you don't have to use the same version for everyone. You can also separate them with versions, one for agencies, one for prime contractors, and one for teaming agreements with other biz small businesses that I may wanna work with. That's an idea that you can kind of carry on and then edit each one to target that audience. Four, you want to make sure that when you are saving these, it's really important that you remember this, that you do save it as a PDF. 
You do not wanna save it as a Word document or a PowerPoint presentation, absolutely not. As a PDF, when you save it, it locks it and it cannot be edited. So you can send it and not worry that someone is going to change around or mess with your layout or anything you says. It locks it through and that's the best and safest way for you to send it. And it's the easiest way for the person receiving it to open it up. So please remember to save it always as your final version that you're going to send out as a PDF. You should keep a version that is editable if you're working on it on Word or if you're working it on it on PowerPoint, however it is that you're working on it, save a version with that because that's what's gonna allow you to edit it. But the one that you're going to be sending out, you need to make sure that you save that as a PDF. And then lastly, remember the rules and the exceptions. One page is what is typically seen. Two pages is if it's per request. And remember to keep it concise and bullet points when you're working on these. So here's our contact information. Um, we are still working remote and you can contact us um, via uh, our phone number and email address and set up uh, an appointment if you'd like a one-on-one -on -one with us. And we would gladly love to work with you on helping you with your capability statements or any other hurdle that you are facing as well. At this point in time, I'll open it up if anyone has questions that they may want to ask um, about capability statements. We can go ahead if you want to um, raise your hand or, or just shout out your questions, by all means, go ahead. No, I'm just going to make a comment. That was really helpful to review the types of things that, you know, in my previous, some of my previous jobs, internal capabilities um, statements and documents from one functional group to another uh, have been really helpful. And this is the first time I'm thinking about it from, you know, like internal to external, like for clients. Um, because in the past we've, you know, just showing other teams within a company what you're capable of um, has been my my experience. Uh, but, and this, this aligns a lot, but with, with um, of course, more complexity, like more detail. Sometimes people tend to overthink it and think that they have to put so much information and that they re they get like sidetracked and stuck on something, but you know your business, you know what you do. So the same way that you would pitch your business to me, it's like you're putting it on paper. So don't overthink it. It's, it's simple. And like I said before, bullet points and concise will help you keep it simple. I have also found that looking at you know, people who do what I do and looking, seeing how they describe what they do. Uh, that was, that's been helpful for me as well to see how they list. Not that I'm, you know, copying it verbatim or anything, but it gets an, it gets, it's a little inspiration to start thinking about how to describe what I do. Good, good. I'm happy to hear that. Does anyone have any other questions, comments? concerns? Did I do that great of a job that no one has anything to say? Well, I'm glad that I did do that good of a job. Uh, I want to thank everyone for attending today. Um, again, if you are interested in doing a one-on-one -on -one, um, advising session on capability statements or any other um, or any other type of concern, gover government contracting concern that you may have, um, I will include it in our chat box um, where you can, sorry, let me stop sharing, where you can go and set up an appointment with one of our PTEC advisors and we'd be happy to help you all um, with any of your needs. Um, just give me one second to put that in the chat. So there I've included the link. You can always, like I said, schedule a one-on-one -on -one, um, and we'd love to help you out with any of your endeavors. Thank you all so much for attending. Thank you.
Great job, Catherine. I'm gonna head off.